scoop them up with our bill. As you would imagine, the pelican's bill opens and closes like this. But they are unusual in that the lower jaw can open right out to form a large net that they use to scoop the fish up. On the other hand, the American brown pelican, a very ordinary looking bird if I might say so, when they fly across the surface of the water, see a fish deep in the water, they can dive in like a gannet or a tern and catch the fish. If the Australian pelican tries a clever trick like that, they'll make complete fools of themselves because they are so buoyant, they'll simply pop up like a cork. And in fact, the only way these birds can go underwater naturally, when, don't touch them please, is when they're assisted by sharks or crocodiles, which is something they try and dodge. The only visual difference between a male and female pelican is one of size, with the male being larger. And the fully... He likes you. That's a bit of fluff. Y porque hacen ese movimiento como si tuviera frío. Sí. Um, sí tiene frío. Now I've lost the plot. Huh? The fully mature bird has a little bit of yellowy brown on the. Don't touch them, please. On the point of the chest that looks like water stain. It is in fact a feather colour change because the immature bird is plain white on the point of the chest, and the very young bird. No, I ask you not to touch them. Otherwise, I'll ask you to leave. Clear. Clear on that. And the very young bird is mousy brown in the feather colour. And we don't have a young one here at the moment. Speaking of colours, as you can see, the normal colour for a pelican's bill and jowl is quite pale. However, when both the males and the females are ready to mate, the bill and the jowl will change to a deep pinky purple colour, like this one here, and they will allow the jowl to hang that under the jaw and they will shimmer it in a mating display. For those of you who are particularly interested in the annex of pelicans, the female pelican does not mate for life, but is generally regarded as being fairly sporting. Now, I feed these birds... Oh, grumpy tonight. I feed these birds every day of the year, and in order to do it, I buy fish from the local fish processor and run freezers when the fishermen can't get out. The whole exercise is very expensive, actually about 40000 a year to keep going. And the whole thing is totally funded out of my pocket. In order to help cover the cost, we ask for a donation of $3 per child, $5 per adult at the end of the feeding. If you have to leave early, feel free to leave a donation my boot on the back of the ute because to walk off without leaving a donation is regarded as being extremely mean, miserable and shabby and it makes me irritable, which is not good. Now we're going to begin, let me get my voice sorted out, by trying to feed some seagulls. If the seagulls are hungry, they should take the fish from my hand. There is a fairly good chance that the pelicans will regard that as a complete and utter waste of perfectly good fish and we may see some aerial combat. If you're exceptionally lucky, that aerial combat could take place over your heads. And if you happen to get bombed, that is regarded as a bonus and an optional extra for which we don't charge. Most people find that incredibly generous. So see how that falls out. Now, by your foot, did you drop a piece of blue stuff? Right. Hey, lucky it went on your toes. <laughs> You saw how a pelican can do a fancy water ski landing. Sometimes you can trash a pelican's landing at the last minute by throwing a piece of fish at them. If I get a chance, I'll demonstrate for you. What's going on here? <laughs> now I reckon we'll be able to trash a landing. Oi! <laughs> we'll just see if we can trash a landing when this one comes round. <laughs> Too heavy. Okay, 
gösterme. <gülüyor> Some people wonder why I wear waders to feed these things. You'd have to be a complete idiot to try wearing a kilt, even in the middle of winter would be far too dangerous. <gülüyor> Sometimes the seagulls can appear quite shy about taking the fish from my hand. And that is because when the pelicans are really hungry, they have been known to eat seagulls live. One very distinguished pelican was seen eating a chihuahua live once, and that justified that particular pelican's place on the face of the earth ever more, in my opinion. Chihuahuas are really are dreadful things, and they should not be encouraged by anybody. Did you get this? A bonus. When pelicans eat their food, they don't chew it at all. They simply swallow everything whole. And you'll just have to accept as gospel that they can swallow a fair amount in one hit. And I will try and demonstrate with the old fools on the platform. And I am, of course, referring to the pelican. The trick here is you get a really good handful of fish and you throw it into your general direction. Generally speaking, the pelicans will open their traps and catch it. Sometimes they don't, and that simply improves the people behind them enormously. But I haven't missed for a couple of days, so I think you can relax. The other thing that might happen is a really happy pelican might walk amongst you. If that happens, there's no need for hysterical squealing or indecently throwing your legs up in the air. Just relax, the pelicans won't eat you. Pelicans also like to swallow their food head first, but you can drive them absolutely nuts by giving them some the wrong way round. And I'll try and demonstrate <laughs> if I can get it sorted out. I'm driving me insane. Right, now for the good thing. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>